which I fully respect. I like that. He he's a killer. He is a zombie killer with standards. Professionals have standards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> on this super fan com spoopy, creepy, and kooky series of Halloween content called Super Scream Con. I'm Retro Rick, and I'm joined by Deej. What's up, everyone? Uh, Sammy. Yo. And f- special guest from Geek Juice, we have Daydreamer. Hello. Because Geek Juice don't give a fuck. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> Again, I just X. love how it's geek juice. The word juice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that was coined by um, the site's founder, yes, Alex Jowski. Well, if who, you ever talk like, to him, let him know mm-hmm. I love that. Can do. I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, at the moment, he has um, semi-retired because he's always welcome to come back. Yeah. And Mr. X is now the site holder and... Basically, uh, quote unquote leader. Yes. H N I C. But um, yeah, like I've been with the site for almost two years, but oh, I've nice. been watching it for three years. Okay. Yeah. They're so what basically is? The... Oh, what? sorry. I was going to say, what is Geek Juice? I just heard about it, and okay, this so is just because I'm not around the started, internet. It started as a podcast have uh, called Geek Juice Media. Ca- okay. Called Geek, Geek Juice Radio. Geek Juice Media was their site. Mm-hmm. Um, then Geek Juice Media had their own site, which had Geek Juice Gaming, which um, spawned like different like shows... Um, and which had different people on it, including the cinema snob of, w- would occasionally be on. <gasps> you guys had him? He's oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah, we had him for a while. Um, there's a whole yeah. thing about that, though, yeah. unfortunately. Oh, okay. We had yeah. an angry man. But, named, yeah, I understand. Yeah, we had an angry bearded man named Josh Hadley on. Um, that sounds like a great segment, the angry bearded man. I'm pretty sure that's how Comic Book Man opened every episode. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, we they had uh, Cecil on, who's been a guest on this show. Oh yeah, Cecil's great. Um, oh yeah, I've yet to um, be on with him, but yeah, he's been so busy. Oh yeah. Um, Brad's ex, Mistress J, who's really cool. Um, okay. And it basically. And they basically have now become, like, um, riffers of, like, random movies and random TV shows. Oh, cool. Cool. Basically, like, what Riff Tracks is, but we're more R-rated and we'll cover anything. So then I have to ask the standard question with that. How many porn? (laughs) <laughs> some only a few porn actually some some but actually. We're, we're getting there we're getting there um we <laughs> we pick specific days only for doing porn i think mostly those are relegated to like fridays <laughs> and it'll depend on the type Wait, of like actually doing porn or talking about <laughs> Ta- talking about it well, and riffing over it i'm gonna say now like I an actual movie eat juice <laughs> yeah. Well, now, now I have to ask have you debated over which one has so far had the best soundtrack <laughs> uh, not yet but um X I'm really loves best comedic porn ever is Lord of the G-String I'm just saying <laughs> oh okay I gotta write that down that was one of the best comedies I ever saw in my life <laughs> it sounds amazing I actually, yeah. yes I, 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 I do actually remember that one I that I rented that <laughs> one and I've actually rented uh, the Bear Wench Project which is the porn parody of the Bear Witch <laughs> oh wow <laughs> oh wait a minute there's also apparently a uh, Captain Marvel one which has better acting than the actual Captain Marvel movie 
Oh, damn. <laughs> I, I don't mean to start a conflict, so I apologize. It, it was just something I heard. I'll start yeah, a conflict. I, I, I'm not a fan of Brie Larson. There. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that's fine. You know what? That's fine. Yeah, I it's their own. Uh, I enjoyed the shit out of her stuff. Uh, I, I wish people would, you know, enjoy shit and then not stir the pot all the fucking time. That's what I wish. <laughs> oh, no, I, that, no, I, I absolutely agree with you. I'm just, like, it's gotten to the point where it's like, I'm just so sick and tired of every time I, like, go on YouTube or Twitter or anything, it's like, all I constantly hear is, oh, this new, the new crap show with Star Wars. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. I'm just like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of just, like, everyone just constantly attacking every single franchise can we just like can we go back to like liking something and just hating it in our like our in our own ways like privately yeah yeah um, I, I, as I, i've stated it's been a weird year yeah i like <laughs> I, I like brie larson in uh community and scott pilgrim versus the world Fair enough. Yeah. I, keep, I keep forgetting she was in that movie yes yeah, oh that's Pilgrim, right she she Andy. played one of scott's exes yeah, these Envy and, Adams. Yep. Yeah, and she actually the first thing I ever saw her in was the United States of Terra because I had Showtime at one point. Oh Ooh. yeah, yeah, she was the daughter. Oh dear. Okay, getting back to the show. Uh, oh, yes. sorry. We have a show. Oh, to right, do, we're actually. recording. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> recording. Off, yeah. First off, we have a review of a movie that me and my buddy Chris already reviewed earlier. Um, from tr- from the good people at Tricoast Entertainment and Dark Coast, Violence Voyager. Um, Thank you very I, much for that video, people. Yes, mm-hmm. this was very something to watch. Um, <laughs> it was filmed in Gekimation, which is the style in which paper cutouts are filmed in real time, m- moving through a scene in order to create the illusion of motion. Mm. And I did not know that term until I watched this movie. <laughs> Uh, well, I learned that today, so yes. the more you know. Do do do. First off, uh, Deej, what were your first thoughts when you actually saw the trailer? My first thoughts were, and it's pretty much like how I would title this review, take Paper Mario, Reanimator, combine them together, and you pretty much get Violence Voyager. Apt. I. I- that I sounds concur. interesting. Uh, Daydreamer, what about you? Um, well, when I first heard of this um, film, it was actually through um, Leslie Rice, the Fear fan, if you're aware of him. Uh, he's been doing horror reviews for a while as well. He's not as well-known, I've noticed, but like the, a lot of people I've, I know have seen it. And he got to see it in his area because they were doing like the film circuit screening around there and I was just like this looks like Cronenberg and paper I love it I want to see it <laughs> nice and um, first off and first and next um, the general thoughts about the movie that after watching it there is like surprisingly I was expecting it to be just really kind of cheesy and such which it kind of was but there's like a there's actually surprisingly a lot of like actual like tension thrilling moments and some heart in the in this movie like actual moments where it's like I started feeling really bad for certain characters and it just but like uh the my only real big complaint about the movie is like towards the end the story starts to make less sense yeah. like not not so much that it ruined my watch like me watching the movie it's just certain things like i was like hold on wait a minute i thought you were doing this because of that wait why are you keeping them alive if you're doing this and it's like i i'm trying to avoid spoilers oh don't don't worry like, about spoilers we already spoiled this in our first review oh god they okay, did okay well like for instance uh the main the little kid to cat i think his name was takashi the one who was like changed that was changed yeah. already like was mutate yeah so He's capturing all these other children to supposedly transform them so then he could feed them to his kid, but he wants them to be alive. And I'm just like, why are you keeping them alive if you're essentially feeding them to him? And then at first I thought maybe he was, like, 
trying to get body parts because like he was going to try and turn him into a real boy again or something because I thought that's what he was talking about and then all of a sudden I'm going to give you a child bride it's like whoa where did this <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, Daydreamer what about you yeah uh, I enjoyed it and um, I agree it was a lot of tense moments a lot of what the fuck I'm like oh my god what the fuck's happening to these children and then just the triumph near the end where it's like oh, you won't be the same but at least you uh, got rid of the shit but yeah my gripe is I'm I don't feel like enough was um, explained on why the hell they're being mutated this way exactly. to just be fed yes. to this guy and yeah, like I said in the review, I felt like this should have been like like a series, like maybe like 40 to, f- to an hour like vignettes about a lo- a, like a Netflix series, about like 6 to 12 episodes to get it fleshed out more. Mm-hmm. Like a, yeah, like a limited, like a limited series yeah. events kind of thing. Because half of this stuff made no better. sense. Because um, my, my fear was, like, when he says, he keeps saying, let's not piss off mother, and then we see the giant mutant freak thing mother, and I'm just like, I'm like, did you transform your mom into that too? Yeah, we or don't know. Any, what? Also, where did the bridge go? We never find that out. Yeah, like, how, the paths just magically disappear. I'm just like, it's not, it's like, because I'm just like, it's, it's, not, it's clearly not magic. The place isn't haunted. It's just... A creepy scientist, his daughter, and their mutated and his mutated son. So it's yeah. like, what the hell happened? And then you have, um, and keeping in mind this this movie takes place in a day and a half. Yeah, it takes place in a day and a half. He does not care about when his father dies. And that whole ending with, oh, your mother's okay with you looking like this, apparently. Yes, she was completely fine. She's just like, oh, as long as you got me my flower, thank you. (laughs) Well, I mean, to put in perspective, a mother will always love you no matter what. Okay, for the the most part. My favorite character. Okay, that's my favorite character. All right. Um, moving on to uh, favorite characters. Uh, Deej, your favorite character. The cat. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I absolutely love that little. I absolutely love that little cat. I felt. I cry. I almost cried. At the end, when like all the animal friends died, except the bat who just ate shit. What? The, <laughs> the bat. I can't. You know, I couldn't tell if the movie was trying to be intentionally funny or unintentionally funny. It was because like the moments where like the bat would just start randomly licking everything. Yeah. It, it just felt like it, it was being cheesy at the same time. Oh yeah. Um, like, is it? I'm thinking like it was trying to be like in the same tone of Evil Dead Two, like you know some kind of serious but kind of goofy at the same time. Oh yeah. Uh, now the Dreamer, problem who, with who's your favorite character? Um yeah. Uh, for some strange reason, I liked Bobby, even though he's basically like in this story white savior because he's yeah. an American. And that was like the, uh, the whole like focus of the well. Will this machine accept him because he's an American? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> plus, plus I, uh, also, mm-hmm. oh, I, those two things that re- the uh, the forehead ridges really bothered me too. They never explained that. Oh yeah, it's just I thought like, that was I, just I, a I, style. Yeah, but they did acknowledge the uh, the cuts on the guy, on the kid's hands at the. Because mm, yeah. that really, oh, they did that at least. Yeah. It's super powered. <laughs> and it, it becomes a mech anime at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, worst character. Actually, other than the cat, my favorite character is the introduction logo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, worst character. Uh, Daydreamer? Um, yeah, the, the rigid head's uh, little brother who kept being a brat to um, Bobby's father when he was trying to look for them. <laughs> Yes, and he's. Just uh, like, I'm just like, give me money, give me money. Yeah, it just dis- disappears like almost at the end. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's because the the father is like, uh, you're not coming with me into this place, it's, it, which honestly was for the best. I didn't want to keep hearing his annoying ass. Yeah, good point. 
I kind of wish he did go in just so we could see him <laughs> get eaten. Oh, uh, yeah. Also, and Bob, then the, the Bobby... twist is he would have lived at the end, and I would have punched my screen. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Bobby vo- being voiced by Jimmy Neutron, you could totally tell. It was... Because it's oh, the God, wait yeah. is it for real. Yeah, or we uh, just Debbie um, Derryberry did the voice of Bobby. That was actually Jimmy Neutron. I thought it was yeah, that was crazy. Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I hate this movie even more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, plus, uh, like, I I was trying to look up like more cast listings, and I got like. Fuck all, except maybe a few names for, like, the original Japanese yeah, all voice actors. Too. And one of them was surprising, though, it was uh, Tomoro Taguchi, who's been in Tetsuo the Iron Man. Yes. He's like, he's that's the only thing I remember that dude from. And then someone from Attack on Titan. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> favorite scene, Beach. Favorite, ah, favorite scene. Um, I think my, I don't know, I guess uh, my personal favorite scene would have to be the one where uh, the main the main kid and all the animals are trying to break into the base and they fight that giant mecha, mecha mutant. Yeah, that came out of nowhere. I, that was awesome. I thought that was a badass scene. And uh, I, my second close favorite scene would have to be the one where the kid, where the cat gets revenge on the dog. Yes. Oh yeah, I, I, I was just like, "Oh my god, damn! He just fucks up that dog up." <laughs> yeah, that ending climax—that uh, that's my favorite as well. Because it's just get rid of it, burn it all, <laughs> burn it all. I'm honestly glad that you finished that sentence with "fucks the dog up" because I was kind of worried there. <laughs> <laughs> also. Listen, we'd be having a really different conversation if if. <laughs> You would uh, cut that short. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, least favorite scene, Daydreamer. Uh, shit. Well, just having to deal with uh, dead kids. I don't take that much glee in seeing dead kids, no matter what form it is. Or it's them like, being yeah, naked. Yeah, you got balls. Or yeah, them being uh, naked. Yeah, that as well. It's like, yeah, I, I, I get it. Like, it's cool when horror films got the balls to kill kids, but it doesn't make it any less terrible. Yeah. Deej? I th- it was when the scene is when the boy uh, he escapes the mount he escapes the mountain and the old guy what was his it was like old monk it was like old, old, man, old lucky old, monkey old, yeah old man something monkey it was like old man lucky monkey well, that was, and that's right yeah yeah, yeah lucky he, monkey yeah and he's and he there's this weird moment where he goes like he goes what where, where where are my underpants? I saw that you were wearing these, and I took them off. They're Takeshi's. Yeah. And it's like, what is what? Yeah. <laughs> Why? You it's sick like, weirdo. It's like, bitch, they were the only pair of clothing I could get. What are you doing? I will give them to Takeshi when he gets back. It's like, it's like, uh... bro, <laughs> you don't know the situation. Maybe he gave it to them. He had no spare underwear. You sick monkey. Okay. And also, part of me before like all the uh, weird, weird stuff happened with the aliens, like the uh, old guy like who runs the uh, amusement park when he was describing stuff and how they're getting set up, it looked like the like the, uh, an intro scene for a video game. Mm. <laughs> like here's your setup. Here's um, like how Halo would open sometimes. This is what you're going up against. This is how your weapons are. Oh my God. <laughs> I did watch that scene where I'm think where they enter. I'm like, you know, this looked like it could be kind of fun. Yeah, so Minus, did I. Minus the freaking, you know, you get kidnapped. And then, yeah. Then those girls that like randomly show up and disappear, then show up and they're dead. Yeah, it's like, uh, like you you were completely useless. What the fuck was go? Y'all did not have a good plan in place. No. This, this script needed, like, a few times going over. Mm-hmm. And a few It more just hits. needed a few tightening up. So, like, it, w- it had to be... You had a good setup. The the dad lost... This guy lost his son. He went to rebuild him. And 
But then somewhere down the line, he had to feed him yeah. other children. That's when I was getting confused. I was like, where did that come from? And he feeds him curl milk, which me and my buddy Chris f- figured out was uh, fight milk from Always Sunny. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay. <laughs> um. So, uh, Deej, would you recommend this to someone as a rent, buy, or pass? This would be, for me, it's a solid rental. This is one of those, this is definitely one of those movies that you have to see for yourself at least once because, like, not only, be, minus the ending, like, how it was, it just kind of had a bump, you know, just a few bumps the road. It was very enjoyable. Like, if any, like, I thought a lot of the art was very beautiful. I loved uh, the style of it. I loved how they did a mixture of, you know, paper, and they would occasionally throw in, like, quote-unquote real blood and such. Yeah. So they they try he try, they tried something they experimented they tried to do different things so I would highly recommend it as like even if you want to look like as an art piece works uh, Dr- dreamer what about you um I'd have to recommend it as a rent as it is right now because it's such a mysterious film to me because there's not much out about it and it's, it was very hard to get a hold of from the beginning anyways. But, like, if they were to have, like, a better release or something of, like, uh, an actual physical copy where it had more special features oh, yes. I, explaining I would lo- I would the process. I would love to see, like, a special feature, like, yeah. the making of. I, oh, I would, would love to watch that. Yeah, if that was available, then I'd recommend it as an actual buy because for certain types of people like me, this would just be, like, one of those cult films where you just want to relish in it, whether if you liked it completely or not. It's still something fascinating. Oh, yeah. Rick, do you mind if I uh, give my opinion on all this as yeah, someone no who hasn't seen it? Yeah. So, w- w- What would be your takeaway from, like, after hearing all this? So my takeaway from this is that and I, to pre- to be transparent about it, I also heard your initial review of it. Um, so, having seen some of the trailer and seen what you had for the review, the movie itself looked very interesting, flat out. What it drew me in, what would what I find the most interesting about it is the art style, hands down. Um, because it's not something you don't see often, and. It, as weird as it sounds, I think it lends itself more to that suspense genre. Right. If you know, if that makes sense to anybody, because it's mm-hmm. just you know, because they have they give the element of motion and everything to that, um, like making people look like they're walking, how they have to move everything. Um, it feels like you know, it, it almost felt like watching a pop up adventure book. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. It's like you don't know yeah. what you're going to turn the next page to. That's actually um, to say. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm hearing a lot of complaints about certain things. And um, what I'm thinking is it's definitely an indie film. Um, it was part of a horror film festival because I did a little bit of research on the people who had sent it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, And they were part of, and so it was part of an indie film festival. I feel like, just what I'm hearing about these, you know, these nitpicks of story is that they had to, you know, there was a time constraint for certain things. Because, you know, with film festivals, they, you know, depending on category, depending on time and, and everything, they have, you know, you might have to make a movie that's like, oh, say, an hour long, and you want to try and get as much in there as you can. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like they did. It was just in the sequence and order in which you guys saw it, it sounds like it was just a little, they didn't get in enough information. Yeah. They just so, had to clear up a few, it was just, I would say just if they clarified maybe one or two things, the movie would be a lot that be- would be a lot better. Yeah. Okay, so yes. going on a scale of negative 10 to positive 10, how would you rate this, Deej? On a scale from that, I would rate, honestly, I would rate this, um, I would give this a solid uh, 6.5 out of 10. It was, like, it's it's a little above average, like, mainly because, like, like the art style, uh, there were some good moments, 
Uh, but it, it, t- it takes some points away because, as I've already stated, confusion towards the end, didn't quite understand what certain things were going on, and I couldn't I couldn't tell the mood. I couldn't tell by the mood if you were trying to be funny or you weren't trying to be funny. That's that usually mm. if you do that. It can make or break a film. It is hard to do that in a horror movie. Oh well, they did it in the new Halloween movie. Mm. Uh, uh, Daydreamer, what about you? Um, I might just give it a solid seven because of everything I agree with. It's like it, it's good, but I give it the extra point for. There's still a lot of mystery that could be cleared up with a release that just figuring out how they did this and what their ideas were yeah. that could probably clear up things that we don't know right now about the store. But as it stands, I'm fine with it. Okay. So going on my uh, review of 4 and Chris's review of negative 3, we are at 14.5. Nice. He gave it a negative 3? Yep. Um, wow. At first he gave Damn. it. A, at first he gave it a four, but as we started talking, he just said, "You know what? I'm changing it to negative three. That's kind of well, I, to be Damn. fair. That's not usually what happens. It's it was that's that's kind of what happened to me when I saw the Last Jedi for the second time and talked about it. <laughs> and the best part is, I was on a date with a girl, and she she I remember she turns over, and looks at me, and goes. It's like, wow, you really don't like this movie because apparently that was <laughs> I'm just like, mm, no, no, I couldn't enjoy the date. I was too pissed at the movie. Oh. <laughs> um, and, you know, going off of, for me, at least a score on just the bare minimum that I have. So I'm going to give it a decent score. I'm going to give you an, I'm going to give an extra point five to round that up to a 15. That works. Um, mainly because I'm only going off of first impressions from a trailer. And from what I'm hearing from, like, three, di- you know, like, four different people's perspective. So I think giving it a solid 15 isn't a bad thing because, again, horror movies in general are a very subjective thing. You either, mm-hmm. you know, it either resonates with that fear inside you that you didn't know you had or you're just basically watching Jason Voorhees walk around Manhattan. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, Retro Rick here. Hope you're enjoying this new episode of Super Scream Con. This week, like always, we are brought to you by the Green Tea House, home of all natural herbal teas, JList.com. You can get a discount on everything you buy by using our promo code. Things for Another World, home of DC and Marvel Comics, pop figures, and collectibles. The Kawaii Box, where you get stuff sent to you each month from Japan of cute random things. And... By Humble Bundle, where you can get tons of great video games, old and new, for, into your inbox to keep. All these offers found in the description box below, and thank you again to Dream Daydreamer for being on the show, and follow her as well as Geek Juice Media. And now, back to our show. Um, and speaking of Jason Voorhees, we now turn to this show's actual topic. Woo! Um, Woo! Favorite horror Wee. horror movies first. Um, as many as you like, um, we'll probably be chiming in with uh, our own comments. Uh, Sam, what are your, some some of your favorite horror movies? All right. So the funny thing is, and Rick, I think I've pitched this to you before. It's my favorite horror movie in the sense that there's only one moment in this entire movie that I actually enjoy, despite everything. Okay. Freddy versus Jason. Nice. Mainly because that fight scene is the only reason I will ever even try to sit through that horror movie. That's totally it, fair. To be, and, yeah. And to preface this, I'm not a big horror movie person. Um, but that fight scene... It's one of those random iconic moments where you just want to see your favorite, two of your favorite slashers duke it out. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, Anything else on your uh, list? You know, and I was thinking about this today, and there is one, and most people won't see it at this, but I'm going off of of when I was a child. Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. Now, by today's standards, I love this movie, but 
when I was a kid, this movie absolutely scared me. Jack Skellington was the scariest thing I had ever seen. The Boogeyman, scariest thing I had ever seen. And so it has a place in my heart as something I was afraid of, but I love it now. Fair. But out of so I do, haven't seen a lot of horror stuff. I'm trying to get into it. I have a few friends who are like, "Oh, we should watch, you know, like the Nightmare on Elm Street or the Halloween stuff." Because nowadays you can look at it and get a good laugh at some of the things. Like, um, and uh, DJ and I had talked about this. Jason, um, it, it, the concept of him being able to teleport is like only because they had to do quick editing in those movies. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just. When you brought that up, it made it remind me of our Halloween episode we're working on right now, where we explain how Jason's teleporting. Nice. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, there's a lot of good things. I don't want to hold up, like because I got a list of things I like about the horror movie genre in general, but I can hold that till later. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deej, how about you? Who? Deej. Oh me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my personal favorite horror movies. It was actually a horror movie. When I first saw it, I hated it. and then, uh, But then I watched it again, and I was like, oh my god, I really like this movie. And I don't know why I hated it the first time. Trick or Treat. Oh, it's like, it, yes. It's, a, it's, big, it's an anthology movie, but big, like different stories. They all take place in the same, on the same town, same night. You know, different parts. And it's and very, the best... very Halloween-y. Yeah. Oh, this is, like, one of the most, like, Halloween-themed, like, beautifully colorful, drenched movies I've ever seen in my life, if that makes sense to any of you guys. Yeah. Is this Colors. the one with the weird, like, uh, burlap sack mask kid? Yeah. Sam. Yeah, that's Sam. Uh, that's, he is, that's actually Sam Hine, the spirit of Halloween. Okay. Or okay. Like the, or like, Sam Ain, if you're going by Ghostbusters logic. Yes. Uh, like, basically, the, one, the some of the rules of Halloween are, like, uh, you always want to keep uh, a pumpkin lit, like, on all, through all of Halloween, and if you ever pull it out too early, then that's a, that's a no-no, because uh, then the spirits can come after you, and that's the opening scene, is, like, uh, the wife said, thinks the rules are stupid, she blows it out, and Sam Ain goes after her. Nice. Now, is that a rule like the last trick or treater at your house? Once that's done, then Halloween is over. Uh, it's more. I think it's more like uh. I I don't know how to describe. It. I think it's it's more of like a like some of it. Like at first, it seems like it's more like a like ancient rule, like ancient rules, like you know, always keep a pumpkin lit. But then they also say one of the rules is always check your candy, because uh, one of the opening bits is uh. It's actually funny. The fat kid from Bad Santa is in this movie. Oh, jeez. He eats. He eats essentially a chocolate bar full of razor blades. Oh. And yeah, <laughs> so that that's a fun scene. But it. But it's kind of. This movie is also really funny. It's not that's. It's not really that scary. There's. There's a bunch of funny moments in this movie. Mind you, it's twisted, sort of darkish humor. Was, I think but it was it's made for TV. First of all. It's not really. Okay, that would make sense. Successful. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. It just it was just but it was just one of those movies that somehow ended up getting into theaters. Basically, it's kind of like uh, what was that movie? Norm of the North. Mm. Judging Maybe. by your blank expressions, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I kind of <laughs> do. Um... Okay, it's a terrible Rob Liefeld. Oh, not Rob Liefeld. Oh, uh, there we go. Rob Schneider uh, animated. Rob Schneider. Rob do Schneider ever, is do the not great ever pumpkin. Watch it. Yeah. Uh, do not ever watch it. It is terrible. Not e- it's not even worth. It's not even worth like riffing it. It is bad. Um. Any more on your list? Oh yeah. Uh. Let's see. There's the Evil Dead franchise. That is my personal favorite. Of I all to mention that the one, yep. franchise of all, because like that one is the one that me that is like is close to my heart, because like that was one of my uh, very first horror movies. That yeah. was one of the first horror movies I saw with my dad. Um, another one is it's I know it's not scary. I acknowledge it's stupid, but I love it. 
And uh, you monster. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm gonna tell you why uh, Sam's saying that. This is this is probably gonna make me parent of the week. Um, I I'm I'm trying to show my girlfriend it because she we were gonna go see chapter two, but she never saw chapter one. So I'm showing her chapter one. And originally, we I thought we have a little one year old named Ruby. I thought she was uh I thought she was sleeping. Nope. Uh, turns out she was awake, and she walked into the living room, sat down, and is watching it with us. And I didn't know until Amanda pointed it out. And nice. we're getting to the scene where Pennywise is opening his mouth to, like, oh, show the dead lights to bed. And she's just, and Ruby's just laughing. I'm like, oh, she's fine. She's fine. She'll be good. All right, you're, and, all right you, so you were watching Chapter 1, not the original it, then? No, not the original one. Okay. No, I I have uh, praise me to Jim Curry. Yes. Yeah, I I want to show Amanda the original one. It's a uh, long set. She... It's a long set. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it's so worth it because it's fucking Tim Curry. True. Mm-hmm. Okay, you didn't know it was Tim Curry until I told you. No, I knew it was Tim Curry. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. anything else, Deej? Well, uh, let's uh, let's see. I know Rick. I know you hate it, but I love the Scream franchise just because I think it's hilarious. And uh, uh, it used to be good. No, it was never good. I think Ash vs. Evil Dead, the TV series, was criminally uh, criminally not you know it was underrated. Rated, it should have yeah. gotten more views. And uh, that's pretty. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Oh, and Hocus Pocus. Yeah, I forgot that one too. That was actually Hocus good. Pocus. And that ends my list. All right. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been saying things, and I thought people oh. were ignoring me. Oh no. oh no, I'm sorry. What What would you like to? <laughs> you know what? Let's take a moment here. Go back through. Uh, what were some of the things you wanted to mention? I know, because there are already things I'm going to mention anyway. So it's like, okay. Uh, yeah, horror is just like near and dear to my heart. I was as not that popular when I was in school. I did have a few odd friends, but it's like. Movies were my big solace, and so were horror movies. I like, give you a high five. Enough, like, good. Yeah. <laughs> that funny was pretty much me in high school. Yeah, funny enough, when I was five years old and I was in daycare in Florida, the dumbasses there at the daycare center allowed the bigger kids to put on the tape for the It miniseries. I was scarred, and I was afraid of the bathroom for a, a, a good chunk of being five after that. Fair. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure Amanda's afraid. Actually, so far, Ruby's not afraid of Pennywise. If anything, she made us buy a Pennywise plushie. Oh, that's adorable. And it was adorable. <laughs> and I'm um, pretty sure I broke the girl. Oh. Uh, so, and I'm sorry to say this, but just for Stephen yeah. King lore, for those fans out there willing to want to know something, the creature that is Pennywise um, being made up of this weird creature that feeds off of fear has one known enemy and it is a giant turtle giant space turtle is yes it, is it a turtle, turtle enough for the turtle club, club and created the universe dude it is it it is the creation of the turtle club itself it created it the turtle club it literally vomited our universe <laughs> yeah no and that is probably the like what gets me over some of the creepy things about Pennywise is that his ultimate enemy of all things is a giant celestial turtle. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It is. Uh, I'm sad Penny, that's not, bro- I'm sad that's not brought up in the King series. Oh, that would be great if that was brought up in the movies. No, like, or, the, just... uh, or the show. Or the show uh, Castle Rock. Yeah. Oh, oh, Castle that Rock, be, yeah. Castle that would be amazing because it's just like a kid has a turtle on his shirt and Pennywise freaks out. Oh, that'd be oh, Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like, instead of silver that kills him in his werewolf form, it's a turtle. It's seeing a picture of a turtle. Yeah, true. <laughs> like, it gives him a heart attack or something. <laughs> Somehow that's, that's less stupid than the spider ending. Yes. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> That, to me, is what ruined it for me. When I was a kid, when I first saw it, I was legit terrified. Like, I was watching part one, I'm, like, actually shaking. Then I see part two, and I don't know what it is, but part two was just so, like, it just killed the mood for me. And when I saw the giant spider, I went, this is Men in Black. 
<laughs> oh my god, yeah, that was, yeah, that was bad. So it was oh. the first thought in your mind, light him up! <laughs> I was like, okay, so uh, Agent K is going to come in and he's going to kill them all. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, years later when I finally watched all of um, the It miniseries, I'm like, oh, this is legitimately good. Oh, fuck you, Spider. Uh, yeah, um, that, that, sh- that does not help my arachnophobia, just throwing that out there. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Oh, then you should, go- then you definitely shouldn't see the movie Arachnophobia. Or play the game Really? Arachnophobia. <laughs> you genius! <laughs> <laughs> or play the PC game Arachnophobia. Because that, well, here's the thing, that movie's more of a comedy than a horror, and it actually stars John Goodman. Yes. God damn, John Goodman's great. Yes, he yeah, is. John, he plays an exterminator, and he's amazing in this movie. He is. John Goodman is just, just amazing being John Goodman. I love him. He's King Ralph. Fun he's fact, um, wait a minute. Who who played uh, I keep, Jeff Bridges, right? Was the dude and everything? Yes. Fun fact, he resurrected the dude. In, um, Jeff Bridges resurrected the dude for the commencement speech of John Goodman's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh my god, he, oh, that's awesome. Look it up on YouTube, <laughs> folks. Sorry, I'm getting oh, off topic. I, I, it, it's okay. I, I I want to look that up now. Yes. Uh, Dreamer, <laughs> what are some of your favorite uh, horror movies? Okay, yeah. Getting to actual favorites. Okay, yeah. Um, dude took my favorites before Evil Dead <laughs> Trilogy. Fuck. Yeah, it, it's on my yeah, list, If it makes too. you feel better, I only like number two. Oh, uh, okay. No, but I got into all of them. Like, I got into the first one, because I used to watch the Bravo's 100 Scariest Movie Moments. I have, when that, entire they on, I have that entire thing on VHS. Oh, yeah, because they don't fucking air it anymore, but I I loved it's watching all, it when I wasn't all on supposed YouTube. to. It's all on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, all on YouTube. I try to look at it and just, like, look back at it fondly, and it just piqued my interest into the horror genre completely and it got me into one of my like all time favorites as well Suspiria the original mm. I love I love that one to death and I was happy to pick up that 4K Blu-ray that Synapse released um, about a year ago it's just so beautiful I bet especially in, in especially in 4K I can imagine Oh, definitely, and then I don't know how y'all feel, but like, I'm I also a fighter for Suspiria that. Is I- I'm also a fighter. For, like, in its own way, it it became its own film, and it just has its own beautiful lore to it. I understand people could be like turned off by the really long runtime. Yeah. And the fact that it's not as colorful, but it has its own story to tell, and it's basically not just a Suspiria a, a reimagining. It's doing like. Literally a whole three mothers film at that point, mm. just referring to all three of them, not just Marcos. Mm. Mm. Like, I enjoyed that, and just o- old horror stuff I love. I just recently got, for my birthday, the steelbook for The Thing. That one's great. The John Carpenter's The Thing. Nice. Oh, I, I can't watch nice. that movie only because... When it comes to you were talking about like you can't watch like scenes with children dying. I I yeah. cannot watch scenes with dogs get getting hurt. Oh I, yeah, I hate it too. I, I hate that scene. I hate it. I hate it. I oh I dread I have, it. I have fun horror trivia. I have more fun horror trivia. Okay. Oh goody. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where is it? I mentioned the dogs. Okay. Okay. So. Fun horror trivia fact number whatever I'm on now, or random trivia fact. Kane Hodder, the current Jason Voorhees of the entire franchise, the current Jason. Mm -hmm. um, It has been added into and accepted by fans for the lore um, because Kane Hodder made a very strict, um, two very strict rules when he, he took up the role as Jason. One, he would not kill kids. And two, he will not kill pets, like dogs or cats or something. So Mm. it was added into Jason's lore that when Jason attacks people at Camp Crystal Lake, he's going after horny teenagers because those are the reason for his death. Other kids and, you know, like, and dogs and animals are not never going to be his target. Mm -hmm, Because he completely ignores the children in um, Jason Lives. 
Exactly. And he ignores anim- and it, like, you know, ignores cats and dogs. Mm-hmm. So pretty much Kane Hodder, by stating those rules, kind of enforced the fact that Jason now only goes after the cause of his death. Nothing yeah. more. Which I fully respect. I like that. He, he's a killer. He is a zombie killer with standards. Professionals have standards. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, he made him into Dexter. I love it. <laughs> oh. oh, no. He'll kill anyone else who gets in his way, just not kids or pets. <laughs> well, you know, what about the kids in uh, Jason Takes Manhattan? Well, remember, he removed his mask. I'm pretty sure those kids died of heart attacks. Yes. <laughs> oh. I, I know that movie's stupid, but that was legit my favorite scene. It was like, respect, and just runs. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? I know Rick. it's stupid, yeah. but I love that movie. I love that. I just um, love actually, I have to ask, uh, Dreamer, are you all set with yours? Or did uh, you have a few more you wanted to talk about? Uh, uh, I did have a few more. I okay, then go for it. I was going to ask Rick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, all, on top of getting the thing for my birthday, I also got the Criterion copy of Haosu. I love, I love shit Haosu. Out of that. Haosu is just is crazy it's so Japanese trippy. shit, and I love it. The, the, I love it. My fingers on the like piano. House, that's that a scene. waifu. Well, Haosu is how you say it in Japanese. I say that to differentiate with the 80s movie yeah. House. Otherwise, you just say House. Haosu. Yeah. Is that the movie where, like, uh, the house was in love with the husband and she kept yes. trying to kill the wife? Oh, my God. I thought that was a fever dream I had, <laughs> I had a long time ago. I, was such I a love Haosu. Because I, all right, I'll talk about it when I get to, to, my, to my list because I have a little story about that. Oh, okay. But yeah, there's um, that, and then shit. I like too many. Fuck. Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to think would be a good one to end on. Um, oh, um, I liked Darling, which was just like this weird psychological horror. Um, I can't remember who did it, but it's starring uh, Lauren Ashley Carter. She was in Lucky McGee's The Woman as um, one of the daughters. Okay, darling. Uh, elder daughter, if you've seen that one. Hmm. And it's sort of just like some... Uh, oh, Sean Young. Girl is just, nice. Yeah, Sean Young's in that one as well. Um, she just goes completely crazy. She's probably crazy from the get-go, but she just gets worse as the film progresses, and it's like, you don't know if it's the house that's fucking with her, or a combination of the house fucking with her and already her not being very stable. Gotcha. I might have to check that mm-hmm. out. Yeah, it's, a, it, again, another slow burn where you're just gonna be looking at things atmospheric, and it's in black and white. But I, I still think that one's really good. Yes. Okay, Sam, what did you want to ask me? I wanted to ask you, Rick, you've been asking us, but what are y- some of your favorite horror movies? Uh-huh. Okay, uh, the Evil Dead trilogy, of course. Awesome. Because the first one I ever saw was Army of Darkness on sci-fi. Ooh. Praise be to Bruce Campbell. Yes. Um, it, Sus- praise Bruce Campbell. Yes. Suspiria from 1977. Okay. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Tree, Dream Warriors, and The Dream Master, which was the first one I ever saw. Okay, which ones were those in the series? Was that like two, one and uh, two? No, Dream Master, Dream Warriors was three, Dream Master was four. Okay. Because uh, Dream Warriors had Dokken on the soundtrack, and I love that song. Mm. Uh, Jason X, because I love that movie, because it has no business being as good as it is. <laughs> no. Let, let's go over the premise of that for a second here. It is the year 2000 X. Yes. And for some reason, a zombie is in space. Hey, Pinhead was in yeah. space. Yeah. Uh, fair enough, but that's Pinhead. That makes more sense than a guy who was trapped in a lake. True. <laughs> then he becomes. Um, ro- then he becomes Uber Jason. Oh God, Uber Jason. <laughs> Which is hilarious because he looks like he has a xenomorph hatchling on his face. Also, oh yes. God. Yeah. Um, next would be Phantasm 2, because I love the Phantasm movies. Okay. Ooh, Phantasm's good. Because I own that box set. Um, the Devil's mm. Carnival 1 and 2. 
<laughs> that sounds like a really cool series that should be made. Uh, D- no, Devil's Carnival is basically from the guys who made Repo the Genetic Opera. Yep. Ooh. Uh, Fun they're fact, they're uh, basically it also musicals. starts the Sean Patrick Flannery. Yes. Ooh, oh, yeah. Um, the first Resident Evil movie. <laughs> okay, I, I can put you an argument for the second one, but that goes more in towards with my video games. Yeah. Uh, well, the fact that the second one's got at least Jill in it, yeah, although Jill and the they let her do fuck all. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll I'll give you a good explanation when we get into video games. Um, mm. Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. Oh yes, yes, Demon Knight. I own so that good. on DVD, and I own the soundtrack. Nice. Uh, Dog Soldiers. Hmm. Where, I don't think I've heard of that. Yeah, it's army men turning turning into werewolves. Ooh, that one's interesting. Oh, that reminds me of that video game we both like, Rick. Which one? The um one with the World War Two and oh, your team. Oh um, oh I know what you um oh my god it's like Operation it's, Darkness or something. Yes, uh, Operation Darkness. Yes, I I haven't played that game in so long. Dude, we need to do a let's play for that <laughs> one day. Um, Cube one and two. Okay. Because I love mm. I love the first cube. The second cube, despite its flaws, is okay. The third one is meh. <laughs> uh, Ginger Ginger Snaps one and Ginger Snaps two. Mm-hmm. I I love Ginger Snaps two because it gave us uh, Tart- Tatiana Marcellini, who's who would go on to star in uh, Orphan Black. Oh, yeah. Uh, happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I can understand that. Those, are, those movies were so much better than I thought they were going to be. Same. Uh, oh, yeah. Like, the I, second I, one I looks expecting... so much better than it has any right to be. Oh, God, I was is. expecting something really stupid, and I ended up falling in love with the franchise to the point where when the director said, I'm not making a third one, I was like, no! <laughs> oh, no! I took, because he said there's no chance that, well, this, all he said, he said in the lines of, there's no chance we'll make a third one unless maybe Netflix wants to pick it up. I'm like, Netflix? Uh, I my business. You do that... it now. Yeah. So that sounds like a thing thing. They need the money. Yes. That's what they need. Um, so it sounds like they made the second one as over the top as possible. Oh yeah. Oh, they totally did. Um, and it was. And it. And I'm glad they did it that way because that was the only way you could go with that kind of, with that plot with that movie. And I yeah. love it. I love every second of that. Of that right. freaking ne- movie sequel. Next is the original Wicker Man. Ooh. Oh yes, original Wicker Man is very good. I fucking love. Um, Edward Woodward in it, yes. and Christopher Lee went on record, still his the favorite of all the films that he ever made. And I love that soundtrack. That soundtrack is good. It's also, funny enough, uh, a musical, yes. if you think about it, yes. with all the music that's in Wicker Man. Uh, I some, just find it oh. funny that someone named Woodward was in the movie Wicker Man. <laughs> oh, he's also the original um, equalizer from the TV show, because nice. not many people remember that those Denzel Washington films are based off of that series. That's right. Um, the Japanese movie Junk. Okay. Which Junk? I've never heard of that. And It, it was billed oh, as... Oh, it said it, Junk. It, yeah, Junk. <laughs> J-U-N-K. Yeah, Junk. Ch- yeah. It's billed what? as Okay, the, so what's the plot for that one? I got to know. Um it it was billed to me as like the Japanese version of the first Resident Evil movie. Okay. Okay. But the th- mm, Okay, wow. so how did it live up to that title? Kind of sorta. <laughs> Cuz Did the title explicitly tell you how bad the movie would be or was it better? It was it was an okay watch. Okay. Um, next, the, t- the title intrigued me because when it comes to these Japanese movies, and I'm not dissing them by any means necessary, but nor- most of the time they're not exactly that creative with their titles. Yeah. Uh, Just like they're yeah. pretty much plain. They're pretty much plain. Again, not dissing them at all. They a lot the of them ring are really great and fucked up in their own way. Okay. Next, mm-hmm. would be, next would be uh, addition. Audition. Oh God, yeah, yes. that one's that just movie. That sounds there. terrifying. Oh, my. Well, it's it's a build up burn. to the la- It's a build up. That movie is an, is just build up to the last like ten minutes. 
Oh, that yeah. is actually pretty good. Yeah, Audition is like the quintessential build-up Japanese film. It, yes. it is amazing. It's one of Mike's uh, best, honestly. Yeah. Uh, next is Old Boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh, that one hurts to watch, <laughs> but it's so good. Yeah, it does. I just loved your I just loved your response. Old oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um the entire psycho movie franchise. I can respect that. Have you watched Bates Motel? Yeah, it's okay. I mean I am a f I'm more of a fan of the movies and the uh short lived miniseries that, that came out of it. Cause, uh, okay. Cause I will s- Go on. Yeah, I will say, of course, first psycho film classic. Two and three, I still go back and forth a lot on the quality. Three, it's so hard because Anthony Perkins put in a lot of work, and I know how dedicated he usually was to making films like that. And then the fourth (laughs) film, I know for sure I love it. It's just, it was a great, is a great send off. It was a great like actual uh, prelude to showing how he got the way he was and how his mother was. Yes, and also so, fun fact, I th- when when sci when the Sci Fi Channel was like still good and, and called Sci Fi mm-hmm. instead of an old Jewish yeah. man's name. Um, I know what the fuck. Yeah, um, th- they ran the entire Psycho like franchise for a whole weekend with Jason Alexander do- giving a tour of the house. Mm, shit, that's I awesome. think I remember that back when sci-fi was actually sci-fi and not sippy. Yes, yeah, an old Jewish man's name. Yes, a <laughs> Jewish man's name. I know. With that reaction, I have to ask, Dreamer, are you feeling all right? <laughs> I'm fine. I might uh, just giggly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next would be it, Chapter One, because I. That's fun. It's a fun movie. Um, r- current or current, older? Current. Okay. Yeah, um, I love those. Um, next is, uh, 1, 4, 5, and 9 of the, uh, Japanese Tomei series. Oh, Tomie! I still need to see the Tomie films. What are those? Uh, basically, it's about a girl who, uh, she has, like, a ton of admirers, and it drives her to madness, often resulting in her death, but... Every cell of her body can regenerate and move on its own independence. The thing is, Tomie can never die, and yes. she just an agent of chaos, whether she knows it or not. But <laughs> yeah. for the most part, she knows it, and she doesn't care. They're... So your standard Pandora's box Joker combo. Yep. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Okay. Um, there's about uh, ten films in the series. Mm-hmm. I remember it's um from it's based off the manga from Jinji Ito, who's also made um Uzumaki. If you're aware of that one, yes, I have a friend. I, I also have a friend who used to cosplay as Tomei. Oh yeah, uh, I and... remember from the first film, Ito had picked out the actress himself to play Tomie. Oh nice. And then yeah. finally, Haosu. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I used to be in a uh, anime club in college, and mm. every Halloween we would watch this movie. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, I mostly found this one in high school, and I got a few people to watch it, but most of them were just like, it was even too weird for some <laughs> of them, and they were into weird anime, and I'm just like, what? Come on. <laughs> Now, is Haosu an anime, or is it a live-action? It's a live-action film, but it has so many, like, trippy things that it could have been an anime, and you wouldn't yeah. you wouldn't have questioned it. You question it more because it's live-action. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. I'd like to add one more to my list. It just popped in my head, if I can. Yeah, no problem. Tremors. Tr- oh, Tremors. I love yeah. Tremors. You know what? I I'm going to add one, too. Mainly... More or less for the fact that I know of the movie, I've read some of it, and I have a lot of respect for it. Um, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. 
Ooh, the birds. The birds is really good. Yeah, the birds is really good. Yeah, you know, I mean, for all it's worth, I haven't seen that complete movie, mainly because it, to this day, Alfred Hitch, in my opinion, Alfred Hitchcock, Alfred Hitchcock has, still holds the crown as king of suspenseful thrillers. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But that movie had such good suspense, such a good, you know, the build-up to it was good. It is scary beyond all recognition, just because he is still good at the long game. Oh, yeah. Can I put in some Hitchcock films then on my list? Of course. Yeah, Yeah, so some of his uh, earlier ones, like the two ones that come to mind, Shadow of a Doubt and Strangers on a Train. I love Strangers on a Train. I I watched that one like a month ago again, and I was like, this shit still holds up. I know how it's going to end, but I'm still at the edge of my seat trying to see when he goes to uh, strangle um, the wife. (laughs) you know what? And I mean, like Alfred Alfred Hitchcock stuff doesn't. I don't think it used to get the credit it deserves. Now it's like you know, it's as I was explaining to DJ when we were doing our uh, cartoon show. Um, mm-hmm. The thing about horror today, like horror movies today and horror movies in the past, was that um, in the past they had to make do. In order to make it suspenseful, they had to make do with you know limited editing. Um, their location like they had to do everything with so little today today i mean and i have to use this as the best example um look at um it um you know i mean they did the original one they used tim curry's weirdness to portray how frightening this clown was oh exactly today we can just digitally animate in like what are they called? The deadlights? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the deadlights. Well, you can just, like, you know, digitally put those in and make them, you know, like, seem terrifying. But no, you had to rely yeah. on Tim Curry's talent in order to make it scary. So, mm-hmm. to me, I'm not saying that the, you know, like, you know, you still get a good quality horror movie, but it's not the same. Oh, yeah. Plus, True. all the CGI Although I will... wrecks it. Exactly. I like, will... yeah. Oh, like uh, like I said, Jason's teleporting was spawned by <laughs> just quick editing of him appearing mm-hmm. behind a tree in front of the teenager he wanted to slash. It's glorious that it's literally a fucking ability in the Friday the 13th game. Exactly. He literally can't teleport. It's amazing. And this isn't hell, Jason. It's not. Oh, my God. Um, oh, man. I want to play that game. It's been a while. <laughs> um... Now moving on to uh, favorite horror games. Oh, mm-hmm. the list goes with this one for me. All right, uh, Daydreamer, what do you have? Mm, not many, because I actually don't play that many horror games. A lot of what I play end up being like very colorful. The most violent I ever get is fucking GTA. Nice. And I played a lot of gta 5 i'm actually streaming that now on my twitch channel <laughs> but it, it's been fun but yeah um friend Bo, because oh my god that oh my was lord so disturbing but i love the shit out of friend Bo. that was a great playthrough i, I just want to give her a hug mm-hmm. i know she's gone through so much and it's like oh my god and then I want to believe that everything she's gone through is real and that she really is at that happy ending now because it's just too that depressing to think of what, oh, yeah. what the, what the, like, what the reality could be. It's like, no, I want Yeah, that this ending to feels like reality. a fever dream, like, on so many levels. hmm Like, I refuse to believe that she could just be dead at that point. Or it could just be like Pan's Labyrinth where I just believe that she finally went to the other realm and maybe she's just dying in the human world. Right. To be fair, Pan's Labyrinth would have been on my list for movies because that movie looked scary, but I heard it was actually one of the most badass movies there is. It's half and half. Yeah. It, it, it'd just be like fantasy um, thriller, also historical since it's dealing with an actual war that's going right. on. Um, it was done by Guillermo del Toro, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. I I love that man. Oh. There is a cha- there is a Japanese actress who couldn't pronounce his name, so he allowed so he allowed her to call him Totoro San. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's adorable. So, uh, that's, 
the, that the joke that like one with Rinko Kikuchi from uh, Pacific Rim. Yeah. But so, if I remember correctly, the joke that also went with that, my neighbor Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> <laughs> that fits so well. Oh, that's adorable. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so Fran Bo, I have been playing Friday the 13th a, a bit with my friends because I have it on PS4. I was able to grab it for free when I had PS Plus. Nice. Mm-hmm. I, I have the remake of Resident Evil, but I have not gotten far at all in that freaking game it's just puzzles are not my strong suit so and you're always afraid that x gonna give it to you (laughs) well that's the resident evil 2 remake i that's oh you're talking about one and zero oh Oh, yeah just one i only have one yeah i only have one Uh, but i I can't get through with it um (sighs) fuck i'm trying to remember what else because there have been games in the past that i played that were horror. I just can't remember right now. Okay. Uh, if you think of them, um, just word mm-hmm. about uh, Deej, what yeah. about you? Uh, let's see some of my favorite horror games. Uh, one of the very first horror games I played, it was on the PS2, it was Evil Dead A Fistful of Boomstick. Ah, yes. Ooh. I love that game. That game was so fun. Like, that was my favorite hack and slash kind of game, where Ash would get, like, different, like, you get, you get his chainsaw, or you get, like, different arm, uh, like, oh, accessories yeah. and such. Now, I, I have to... Yes? Sorry. I have to ask, because knowing the man, and knowing that he definitely would, was he was it voiced by Bruce Campbell? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. All three of in them. Fact, the, in fact, the video game came with a it came with a special like a like a bonus video that was actually made during G4 so, of Bruce Campbell Ooh. during the interview. So I was like so I'm watching I was like this was produced by G4 TV. Like, wow, I feel old. <laughs> oh god. Isn't that thing like now gone? It like it ended like 2 years ago. G4? It ended yeah. longer, way longer than now, I think. Like tw- right? L- yeah, like 12, 13 years ago now. Really? Yeah. What am I thinking of? Am I thinking of the one on Vice? Maybe. Or Spike? Hmm. Spike TV? I thought Spike TV had picked it up. Spike TV... Hmm. No, uh, Spike TV... No, it, what happened was uh, originally it was going to be picked up by the Esquire network and that changed and then Esquire ended up becoming its own thing. It got, it went to a different time slot and then uh, Spike... But then Spike TV did end also. It became the Paramount channel. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So if that's I, if that's what you're thinking, that's probably it. That thing's uh, so weird. Paramount just bought it. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know. It was so weird. Like I was watching Bar Rescue. It's like you're watching Bar Rescue on Paramount. I'm like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Followed by Rugrats Vacation to Paris. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, Wouldn't that I be like such a weird Paris. promo? It's like oh, yeah. you get this angry. You get like little babies. Like it's like little Tommy and Chucky are going to Avengers, and then you're killing people. This is the worst place ever. Shut it down. Oh. <laughs> Shut it down now. Oh. oh, question: Is Bioshock technically horror? Yes, I'll yes. count it. Uh, yeah, it is. The Bioshock first, one. I would consider the first two horror games. Fun fact, actually, I have a friend. He's like. He's way older than I am. He yeah. will not play the first Bioshock game because that game terrifies him. Wow. I can't be terrified because he goes, he goes like, I, I hate that game. You have psychopaths chasing after you. I'm like, yeah, but you can shoot bees out of your arms. Yeah. Clearly, he never worked retail. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Who are you going to be more afraid of? A guy in a mask with a rusty pipe? Or the guy who can hatch bees out of his arm onto your face. Exactly. Yeah, well, I have actually the whole um, collection that they put out on PS4, which was 1, 2, and Infinite. And oh, yeah. I, I played all three of those back-to-back um, last year when I bought it. I was like, oh, those are great. I Infinite had, scares me because racism. Infinite yeah. has one of the few games I added the platinum trophies. Like I actually beat the game on like I think it's like nineteen ninety mo nineteen ninety oh, mo. Shit. Nice. Yeah, which, no, which I, is a, I'm which is a hard son of a bitch, even if you get all the health upgrades. Yeah. I I'm not terrible at games, but I'm not that good at that, so <laughs> uh just just trying to beat the game and get to, through the story is what I'm doing. <laughs> Look, I had a friend also, who purposely also platinum make it feel better, What you were saying earlier about you're playing Resident Evil and you didn't know where to go. 
I just finally started playing the Silent Hill games because I never did when I was younger. Yeah. I, I found the original PS2 versions because every single mm-hmm. one of my friends told me, do not play the HD remasters. Oh, yeah, no, don't do not do it. Don't no. do it. They fucked them up. Yeah, so I've been playing the, I, I've been playing number two. I want to yeah. play two, and then I'm going to move on to three. Mm-hmm. I am, I'm lost. I have no oh. freaking idea where to go. It's one. I'm <laughs> stuck in the game. It's I'm, up and to the left. I keep telling you. I'm. I'm like. Sir, I search every left. door. I search every keyhole. Yeah. Back to the list. I killed every monster. No, d- 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 back to. <laughs> back to the list. Okay. Fine. Uh, other horror movies uh, or video games. Let's see. Castlevania for the NES. Obviously. Uh, let's see. Another horror game would have to be. I don't. I don't think I played many other. Oh no! Wait. PT. Oh, that, Pete. Game, that game made me throw the controller at the TV screen, and oh. I'm be streaming that on the Super Fancom Twitch channel. <laughs> PT just makes me sad because it's like uh, it was a great introduction to a game that we're never gonna fucking get now. And then, uh, yeah, and then, res- and then I'll end this list with uh, Resident Evil Four and Seven, which are my favorite in the franchise. Oh yeah, Seven just looking at it is beautiful. I haven't actually played it myself, which awesome. is why I don't put it on my list, but just seeing it, it, it and other people playing it, it, it just looks so good. Oh, it's beautiful. It is a horror movie fan's dream of a video game. Mm-hmm. Nice. I did find I did find some more to add to my list. Okay. Um, Until Dawn, because that was the first oh. game I was able to get on my PS4 when I bought it. I heard that was it, good. It, Fun game. It is really good. Like, choose uh, your own adventure. horror film. Or you're, yeah, basically making sure if these assholes live or die. Yes, but you always kill the Asian chick. <laughs> All, I, I, I had to actually uh, refrain from killing that bitch, despite how much I wanted to. Uh, oh, I killed her. <laughs> so, fun horror game fact about that game, if I may. Yeah. Okay, so I, one, I worked at GameStop when that game came out. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how old I feel. Um, oh. But um, I looked it up because, and how old's that game? I, I honestly like can't remember. Like 2013 was the release date for it, I think. Jeez, Red wow. Box still had it in their yeah. thing for a while. Okay, so, okay, so I, I'm going to say this, spoiler warning, but not really. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah. Um, the Wendigo. Yes. Now, most people don't get this, but that actually comes from Indian lore. Yeah. And it, that might be explained in the game. It might not be. But mm-hmm. I went and looked up the Wendo. Because yeah. I had only known it as a creature that Wolverine fought with the Hulk at one point. Mm-hmm. Or if you know. watch Supernatural. Or if you watch Supernatural, I guess. But I oh, did not. Okay. So, But anyway, it is. Yeah. but actually the Wendigo is created... When a human eats the flesh of another human, it is considered you are tainting your soul (coughs) and you become that creature. So props to them for keeping in line with the mythos of the Wendigo. Oh, I I have another fun fact of why that mythos was so strong. They got Larry Fessenden to write the story for that. He's also the character of the hunter dude in the game. But he actually made his own film about the Wendigo, like, years prior. Oh, fantastic. So he was already... Yeah, so he was already very familiar with the Wendigo. Fantastic. Right, I guess. And, um... The, uh, Last of Us, I guess that counts. It's just, it feels more adventure, even though it's like an infection apocalypse. Yeah. Fair enough. That works. Yeah, that... That that ruined me emotionally, and I can't wait to get the second one in February. That one's gonna oh, be yes. fun. And oh, and Among the Sleep, the horror game where you play as a baby. Oh, that's, that's the one that you carry a teddy bear, right? Yes. <laughs> that oh. one is, is is a very good made game. It sucked ass because it got to me very emotionally, and um. And a little bit into stuff that I've dealt with personally as well. My apologies. Because, like, yeah, I'm not going to spoil what happens in that game. That bear just does not sit right with me, though. I mean, it's voiced by Ghostface. (laughs) I hate that man now. (laughs) (laughs) Lols. 
And I guess that sends it over to me now. Um, first, we got Hunting Ground for the PS2. All right. That's where you're basically with your dog. You get in a car accident, and you basically hide for the entire game from uh, monsters in a castle. Damn. As creepy as that sounds, that sounds also very amazing. Yes, because you ha- mm-hmm. you have to like not move like. You're under you're under a table and you can't like press any buttons or the monster will find you. Mm. Um, I have no mouth and I must scream. Is that where the meme comes from? Yes. It, Fascinating. Um, a game from uh, the novel by Harlan Ellison. You take control of like five different people who are like chained and being tortured. Hmm. Disturbing. Um, Resident Let me put it this way. The computer program that's torturing these people, even Skynet would be like, whoa, yeah. bro. bro <laughs> would, <laughs> would Hal be like, dude? Yes. Yeah. Oof. Even Skynet would be like, listen, I know we hate humans, but Jesus. Yep. Damn. That movie, that, no, that game is dark. I've seen Let's Plays of them. Yes. <laughs> Deej, I just thought of a new cartoon. Oh, dear. Uh, okay. Oh boy! Uh, Resident, I'm waiting. Resident Evil One and Seven. Fantastic. Mm, okay. Silent Hill Two. Yep. M- uh, murdered Soul Suspect. Yes, that is a great one. Where you basically try to solve your own murder in Salem. Mm. Yeah, no, that game. I, I will admit that is one of my favorite games. It had a lot of problems, but it is, was a great game nonetheless. Oh yeah. It was one I randomly mm. picked off with Gamefly, and I ended up loving it. Yeah, no, that ga- that game honestly de- deserved a lot more work than it got. Whereas the next game they sent me made me furious because it just a hidden agenda just pissed me off so much. And I, uh, I, think yeah. I've, I think I've ranted about that game before. I, I I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Okay, hidden agenda is for the PS4. Uh, in order okay. to pl- in order to play it. You need to download an app on your phone. Oh, God. I re- I'm already, like, what the fuck? And that's the I'm only, already furious. And that's the only way you can play. Your your phone is your controller. If I... What the fuck? If I had wanted that, I would have just played a fucking computer game. You know, the only game that I will allow to use my phone as a controller are the fucking Jackbox games. Sorry. Yes. And I, I was I mean, just so pissed off. And it's a, um, a visual novel game, so it's all done on your phone, mm-hmm. but you're looking at the screen. You're you're looking at your TV at the same time. Mm-hmm. Okay, I play Fate Go, and that still sounds like a pain in the ass. Oh, oh, I'm I'm upset. It's Larry Fessenden who did the script for Hidden Agenda. It's the it's also the same studio that worked on Until Dawn. Yep. Oof. Yep. Yeah. Alright, oh. uh, next, um, Castlevania. Which how, one? How? Yes, because there are 38 games in the Castlevania series. <laughs> Damn! Yeah, I forget. Because my friends at Gigaboots did an, an entire month where they played all 38 games. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, Alright, first, uh, Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next, Portrait of Ruin. Ooh. Mm. Symphony of the Night. Fantastic game. Uh, Bloodstained. Yes, Bloodstained. It's amazing. Yes. Just be a bunny girl and stomp people. Yeah. Um, Rondo of Blood. Mm-hmm. Order of Ecclesia. Yep. The and, DS games are going DS. Yeah. <laughs> and Castlevania 3. Mm. All right. Nice. Um, nice. Next, The Evil Within 2. Okay. Only because a personal friend of mine actually got to make an actual monster for that game and flew out to E3. Okay, that that's a fair enough reason. And Parasite Eve. Yes. Oh my god, yes. I, I still own Parasite I... Eve. I love that game. Hated the movie. Wait, do you have a PSP that you play it on? No, I have no way to play it on anymore. Unless I get an emulator. Oh my god, I saw my PSP. I pick that up sometimes. That is a great game. Yes, it's, an, it's a great I'm game with, with, a, with an awesome I have movie to, like, attached to it. Okay. 
I need to play that game. I've I've never played Parasite Eve. I've only ever played the uh, the third game apparently in the franchise. Um, Square Enix now owns a license to that, right? Or have they always? Uh, they always I have. Think it okay, was just because back when they were called Square, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because Square Enix took Parasite Eve. They turned it. It, it was still horror, but they made it an over-the-shoulder shooter, which I think improved it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, any final thoughts on horror movies or horror video games? Uh, I still haven't gone through my games. Oh, Sam, yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like I said, I had a list. I would. I prefer to be at the end. Okay. So, first game I've got to get out there. Imagine this. Um, a young Sammy Soundwave is uh, at a summer camp, all right? Mm. And it's a computer summer camp, so, you know, we're allowed to bring, like, an Xbox or something we're, to have fun and interact. Mm-hmm. Now, picture this. The game demo for the game Fear has just come out. That single game demo scared the ever-living hell out of me. Mm. Now, it, and it was the little things, because you're, um, you're pretty much part of an anti-terrorist group, and you're going into this factory building. And as you are walking down this hallway, all of a sudden... You start slowing down, and you see this girl run across. You get to the end of the hallway, and look, there's just a solid wall. Um, The detail in this game was such to the fact that you could see an old security camera, and you would think that it's, like, blinking statically as game background. But what you can see is um, it's replaying the scene where there's this guy in the hallway, static, little girl behind him, static, little girl closer, static, little girl closer, Static, blood everywhere, little girl gone. Hmm. Mm. And then, the most frightening thing of all is that you walk down this hallway and you start seeing blood dripping all over the place. You um, turn around and try to head back, but you can't move. You see this the little girl coming towards you. Everything goes black. Um, the lights come back on. You see the exit, but in front of you are, fo- are blood footprints. The very first fear game knew how to build suspense. Yes. Um, this, the rest of them became more action shooters, but the first one knew how to build the suspense. Um, Parasite Eve, like Rick had mentioned, um, I have to give all the credit in the world because I do like them as much as I am somewhat of a coward myself. The Resident Evil games, um, there's a, a part of me that really wants to pick up two. If only because I want to play the game so I can play as a sentient tofu. (laughs) Which is scary in and of itself. Um, Let's see, other horror games. Uh, So Resident Evil, Castlevania always holds a place in my heart, especially um, Lords of Shadows 2, which um, had uh, Patrick Stewart um, playing Death. Yep. Which was the most amazing thing in the world. Um, Murder Soul Suspect, like Rick said. Um, Until Dawn, I greatly respect that game. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see, what other games were there? There There's just, you know what, it feels like there are so many games out there that I can't narrow it down. Um, Because, you know, we're going to end this. I'm going to be like, God, I should have mentioned that game. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Because, I mean, I personally have never treaded towards horror in general. Um, I'm I mean, so many emails from this guy tonight. I'm just telling you right now, people. <laughs> Me? Yes. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> um, but, uh, what is it? It's just, I mean, like I said, um, like I was saying earlier, horror games have that strange ability to help you in facing what you're afraid of to a certain degree. Um, Fear kind of helped me just with a little bit of that. Castlevania kind of taught me, like, you know, it's okay to be afraid and everything, you know, even though the graphics and everything weren't that good. Um, Because, you know, I mean, it's like one of those things. It's horror, the horror genre in general... I guess I'm moving on to is just so interesting. Oh yeah. Um, like Silent Hill. 
that of all things, I'm fast. I'm like scared out of my mind, but I'm mm-hmm. fascinated by the lore of this weird town that either appears because you need Russian or is part of a cult on top of a mining town where many people died or something. It, there's just something about it. Um, what is yeah. it? It's Silent Hill Shattered Memories? Yes. Yeah. That is a fantastic game. Because it's psychologically messing with you for the entire time. Oh! That, re- exactly. that reminds me of another game that I forgot to mention. One of my all-time Go favorite horror, mo- horror games. Eternal Darkness, S- Sanity's Requiem. I, the only I reason for that game is because of Spoony, and I actually really want to play that game. I love Wait, which one? Eternal Thanks, Darkness, sorry. Sanity's Requiem for the GameCube. Ooh. Basically, um, you first start off as a girl from uh, Rhode Island, um, who basically f- finds out her family lineage is a uh, Cthulhu uh, horror, uh, a horror uh, life. And, Ooh. Yes, and you play as like different generations of people from like the like BC to like AD mm. um, and also um, depending on earlier in the game there's like part where you like you have to choose the monster you're gonna fight until the end and depending on which one you choose like if you choose like red if enemies attack you you lose health if the green one uh, that affects your uh your sanity meter, purple effects, if, if your um, uh, magic. Mm-hmm. And, and for uh, the sanity meter, it, it has some of the greatest like troll moments ever. Um, at one point, the game will just stop and it will say, erasing memory card. <laughs> it didn't and, say which sanity you were going to be inflicting. Yes, it... Um, there's also, like, um, the game shuts off on you and then re- reboots after, like, a minute. Oh, my God, that is creepy. Yes. Um, the the bathtub scene, like, freaked me out, which is why I could never play this game. Um, and then there's, like, trippy stuff the game does. Like, all of a sudden you'll see, like, spiders crawling after you. But if you turn the camera just a little bit, they're not there. Ooh. Um... In the house you're in, if if you look on different paintings, you'll actually see a guy hang himself. Oh, it's like it's a trippy, awesome game. Um, mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. every once in a while when you, as long uh, the lower your health bar, uh, sanity meter gets, the more the game will mess with you. So you're like going to a uh, a room, and your like arms fall off, your legs fall off, your head falls off. And Ooh. I guess she fell apart at the seams. Yes, and, and then <laughs> the, 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 the screen will go black, <laughs> and, and you're in the previous room. And you have to do what you did all over again. Oh, God. But the, Every uh, gamer's the, worst fear. But then the effect <laughs> won't, won't happen, yeah. Um, we do! Yeah, and then, um, like, one of the first ones is, uh, you, depending on how you do it, you get to, get to the boss, you beat it, and it goes... For for more, tune in to the next Eternal Darkness 2. And it starts to roll the credits. The, those bastards. I hate it when they what? do that. Yeah, so basically you you fight the first boss, game ends, and it'll say, tune in to, to Eternal Darkness 2 to find out more of the story. And the, and the credits will roll for like a minute and a half, then it'll return you right back to the game. Oh my God. See, here's the thing. Trolling is good and all, but that is just straight up cruel. Yeah, what the fuck, man? Um, I, I adore this game so much. It's like one of the first like horror games, like I really truly love. Other than the than the three Evil Dead games, because I own two of them for the PS One nice. and two. Mm. The, the, you know uh, what? The PS One uh, was fun because it takes place inside the cabin. Because you're in the woods, you get to play as Ash, basically reliving Evil Dead 2. Nice. Mm. Um, you know, and it's not so much a horror game, but it could be classified to some degree, and I know Rick will agree with this, Shadows of the Damned. That game, mm. I love Grasshopper Studios. 
that game is a trip. Um, game is so and much fun. It, I mean, like, and it does have horror elements in it, oh, right? Yeah. Okay, because, like, but it's also got, like, some of the most crude humor that I've ever heard in the game. Well, it's made by Grasshopper, by, Stu- by Suda51, of course. Fair enough. I mean, like, you have a demon explaining to you why demon, like, that demons invented ice cream. Yep. <laughs> and, Rick, can I say the joke on here? Go ahead. And so he's like, so, like, your character's like, I didn't know demons invented ice cream. And his, like, little, um... Like, counterparts, like, well, of course they did. Where do you think the term pop to cherry came from? <laughs> and I'm just like, the hell is this game? <laughs> May I quickly add in a horror game that yes. I think people should honestly check out? It's called Splatterhouse, and I'm not talking about the original. I'm talking about, like, there was a, there was a newer version one, and it stars the evil... It's, it has an evil mask that your character wears that's voiced by... Get this, Jim Cummings, the voice of Winnie the Pooh, <laughs> as, as an evil, and he, and, if, and like, Sam's talking about, like, crude humor. Oh, this, this game has tons of crude humor. Basically, you have Winnie the Pooh constantly yelling at you or, like, saying, like, some of the nastiest, funniest shit ever. And one of my favorite lines is there's a part where you get hurt, your arm gets ripped off, and your character, you know, your character's screaming, like, ah! And you just hear Jim Cummings goes, Oh, I'm sorry. Was that your vagina talking? It's like, dude! Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, Winnie the Pooh, damn! <laughs> sorry, sorry. all I can think of is, just, oh, bother. <laughs> <laughs> and it also stars Josh Keaton, a.k.a. my my favorite uh, Spider-Man. So, as, as another Wait, voice. which one's Josh Keaton? Mm. Josh Keaton, he was the voice of Spider-Man from Spectacular Spider-Man. Ooh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, so 90s one. Spider-Man? What? 90s Spider-Man? No, that was... Oh, no, no, that was Christopher Daniel Barnes. This was right, right, right. Um, more 2000s. This was when... Oh, oh, this was the one where... Is that the series where Gwen Stacy... It's visibly obvious that she has a crush on Peter Parker? Yes. Oh, this yeah. Is the, this is the one where... Ap- this is the one where we could have had a third season, but then Disney bought Marvel, and then all that... <laughs> Well, no, then Disney bought Marvel, and now we have Drake Bell as Spider-Man. <laughs> well, I think you that's, know, like, one of the greatest things ever. You know, I, mean, I, I don't I, mind it. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I love Drake and Josh, but I don't know. I, let's be fair here, He and I'm sorry to get off top again, but he is just good, you know? He's at least trying. He was in Kingdom Hearts 3, for God's sakes. <laughs> he was? Yeah, he played young Ericus. I still have to get the game, and apparently I'm not allowed to get it because I didn't play all the in-between fucking games that I refused to play because they weren't three. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you play one? I played one, and I played two. I've never played those in-between games that apparently are needed for three. Okay, the yeah. only game that you re- that you really need to play is Birth by Sleep, and you're fine. Mm-mm, okay. Or and I they have a CD a with all of that on it. That did the entire ah. series. Yeah. Yeah, I'm she just might waiting. Because there are mystery characters that pop up out of nowhere that are from three, what was it, Kingdom Hearts. I, I literally have the game right Look, now. I'm going to be completely honest with you. You might be confused. Mm-hmm. You yeah. might be confused by shit, but it, it's self-explanatory halfway through. I'm not even joking. I, I mean, I, I'm quick to pick up things. I'm just pissed off that I waited... Practically almost a decade. 14 years. Yeah, I waited. Th- I waited. I waited. Um, I waited 14 years to hear Rip Torn be Zeus, and unfortunately, oh. and unfortunately not. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I think we're going to end on Rip Torn. Yes, end on Rip Torn. May he, be bo- may he be Zeus in the next life. Yes. <laughs> uh, Indeed. Um, so, this has been fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. Again, Daydreamer, thank you for being on. Oh, no problem. This was fun. Should have you on again sometime. This was fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If if ever you have, like, an idea for me to come on for, you just hit oh, yeah, me up. No problem. Um, Guys, we didn't scare her away. <laughs> she's she's used to worse. She's used to worse. I, 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 worse yeah. than Sam? Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Deej, Deej. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna let this go. Let this go. Uh, I'm being forced to go see Frozen Two. This might be my last oh. podcast. Oh no! Because <laughs> I hope I will. I will probably either die or be sent to jail to go on a murder spree. I'm just saying. Oh. You kind of can't because either that or because we might get transferred to Fox if you do. Oh no! Well, we don't want that to happen. Jesus. All right, find out more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, to find out more, please tune in to Saturday Morning Cartoonists, where uh, I will act. Where actually we have an episode where we'll be showing our own version of Frozen. Mm. Hey, uh, Daydreamer, where can people find you? Uh, they could find me at Daydreamer three three two two on Twitter. Although the name reads Little Miss Audrey, that's just to throw off people, honestly. Because that used to be the name I was going to put for YouTube, but fuck YouTube. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and you can find me playing Twitch games usually on Wednesdays um, at daydreamer underscore 3322. Okay. And Deej, where can people find you? You guys can find me at Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at DJ Luongo Art. I have a channel also called Broken Caffeinated where uh, me and Sammy Soundwave here... Yo. Our show called Saturday Morning Cartoonists, where our goal is to create the next best Saturday morning cartoon. And, Ooh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yep. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Default Rick, where I just basically rant about wrestling half the time. Uh, <laughs> f- follow the channel on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and now TikTok for some ungodly reason. At Super <laughs> Why are we show. on TikTok? What, yeah. what deals with devils? Because it swallowed up... Um, fucking vine this is the best sequel we have unfortunately yeah, i thought it much. swallowed up snapchat i um, keep telling you if you're going to make a deal with the devil at least contact me first yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that asshole owes me 50 bucks yes as well as other <laughs> means of listening to us like google play spotify stitcher and now iHeartRadio. Um, Woo! if you'd like to Woo! email us you can find you can email us at superfancomshow at gmail.com Check out our, our affiliates you heard during the break, like JList.com, Humble Bundle, La Green Tea House, Kawaii Box, and thing, Things from Another World, along with our Patreon and Coffee pages, located in the description box below. Uh, thank you again for joining us on another episode. Also, another thank you to uh, Dark Coast and Tricoast Entertainment for Violent Voyager. Um, and again, thank you to Daydreamer for being on. Mm-hmm. Um, tune in to our next show which will be something once we get ideas maybe about favorite TV show Halloween episodes maybe oh I like that mm-hmm. favorite you know, Halloween fav- specials yeah favorite Halloween specials I like that one okay maybe um, till then um, for our audio only listeners we leave you with uh, creature feature a gory demise Good Have night. a safe Halloween. <laughs> yes. Indeed. <laughs>